We'll get started in 25 seconds. And all of God's people said amen. amen. If you love the Lord, say amen again. Amen. All right, it's good to see everybody here on this Sunday morning. It's time to uh, prepare our hearts and minds for worship service on today. We hope and pray that uh, the Lord has been good to you uh, on this morning. Amen. We're going to ask, of course, our song leaders to come forward in just a minute to render us some songs. Keep in mind that we will have our collection of communion after a couple of songs, and then we'll go right into our, uh, the other portion of our service. At this time, Brother Ellison, for our devotional service. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning. There we go. There we go. I woke up this morning with my mind, my mind, it was staying. I woke up this morning, I woke up this morning with my mind, my mind, it was staying. I woke up this morning, I woke up this morning with my mind, my mind, it was staying. I'm singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Said hallelujah, hallelujah. Woke up this morning, I woke up this morning. I said my mind it is safe. I woke up this morning, I woke up this morning with my mind, my mind it was safe. I woke up this morning, I woke up this morning with my mind, my mind it was safe. I'm singing hallelujah. Hallelujah, said hallelujah, hallelujah, walking and talking, I'm walking and I'm talking, I'm walking and talking, I'm walking and talking, I'm singing and praying, I'm you can't hit your neighbor, you can't hit your neighbor with your mind, when your mind it is dead, I'm singing hallelujah, hallelujah, Said hallelujah, hallelujah. Still have joy, I still have joy. Lord, after all the things I've been through, I still have, still have joy, I still have joy. Said I still have joy. Lord, after all the things I, you know, I still have, still have love. I still said I still have love. Lord, after all the things I, you know, I still have peace. I still. Said I still have peace. Lord, after all the things I you know I still have, still have joy, I still said I still have joy. Lord, after all the things you know I still have joy. At this time, we're going to ask the brothers to head to the back for offering and communion. Pass me not, O oh gentle sea, Savior. Oh, Lord, please hear in my heart.
said, while I'm down, to this town I call, Savior, do, do not pass, pass me by. And I'm calling you, Savior, oh, Savior. Lord, please hear, hear my humble, humble cry. My humble cry said, while I'm down, Others down are calling. Savior, do, do not pass. Do not pass me by. And I'm calling you, Savior. Oh, Savior. Lord, please hear, hear my humble. My humble cry said, while I'm down, others down are calling. Savior, do not pass me by. Now it's time for collection. It is found at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 7. If you want to give electronically, give through PayPal, Tidly, or Giveify. But this I say, he who sows sparingly, she plows so sparingly. He who sows bounty, she plows so bounty. Every man, as he according, as he purposes in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Now let us give. I love to praise, praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise, praise him. Say, I love to praise his I love to praise, praise him. Said, I love to praise his name. You know that I love to praise his holy name. Well, I love to praise. Praise him, said, I love to praise his name. I love to praise, praise him, said, I love, I love to praise, praise him. I love to praise his name. You know that I love to pray to praise his holy name. For he's my rock, he's my, my rock, my rock, oh. And shield for he's the will, he's the in the middle, in the middle. I know he'll never, oh, he'll never, he'll never, cause he'll never let. He's just a Jew, just that that I have found. We're singing hallelujah, a hallelujah, because I love, we're singing hallelujah. A hallelujah, because I love, we're singing hallelujah, a hallelujah, I love, you know that I love to, you know that I love to, you know that I love to praise his holy name, for he's my rock, Lord, he's my my rock, my rock, oh, for he's the will, he's the will in the middle, in the middle of the, I know he'll never, he'll never, and he'll never, he'll never, he's just a Jew, just a Jew, that, that I have found, and we're singing hallelujah, a hallelujah, because I love we're singing hallelujah, a hallelujah, hallelujah, cause I love, oh, we're singing hallelujah, a hallelujah, because I love, eh? you know that I love to praise his holy name. Now let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for the ones who gave, and for the ones who didn't, let them give another time. In Jesus' name, amen.
Now it's time for communion. Read the psalm of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 and 29. For I receive the Lord, that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus say not in the church such bread. And we have given thanks to you, breaking and said, Take, eat, this is my body that is broken for you. Do this in your of me. After the same manner, also take the cup. When you have stopped saying, This cup is a new test of my blood. This do that we may me. After the same manner, also take the cup. When you have stopped saying, This cup is a new test of my blood. This do that we may me. Do this in your of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, O Lord, shall be guilty in body and blood, O Lord. But let a man examine himself, so I eat the bread and drink the cup. For you eat and drink it humbly, eat and drink with dignity to yourself, not in sort of the Lord's body. Now I pray about the bread about the time of you. Let us bow, shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this bread and cup that represents your son's body and blood. Let us take it with a clean heart and clean mind. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, Lord, oh. God is awesome, said he can move mountains, keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain, said my God, my God is awesome, heals me when strength around weak and young, forever God will. Say my God said he can move keeps me in the valley of hides me from the storm and the rain. One more time, say my God He can move Keep us in the valley of hides us from the storm and the rain. Don't you know that my God said he is awesome, God is awesome, I know that God is, oh, somebody said that I need him, said I need him, said I need him, I need him cause he's awesome, yes he is. Oh, somebody said a healer, a provider, a deliverer, he will provide because he's awesome. Oh, somebody said I need him, said I need him, said I need him, I need him because he's awesome. Yes, he is. Oh, somebody said deliver, a provider, a protector, a healer. He is awesome. Oh, somebody said a provider, a deliver, a strong tower. He will provide because he's awesome. Oh. Somebody said I need him. Said I need him. Said I need him. I need him because he's awesome. Oh, awesome. My God is. He can move. Keeps me in the valley. Hides me from the storm and the rain. 
Don't you know that my God heals me when strength where I've been weak and y'all forever God will one more time say my God he can move keeps me in the valley hides me from the storm and the rain Say, my God, my God is awesome. Karaoke, oh, look, this is coming. All right, we're going to try someday. Y'all know someday? Okay, we're going to try it. Sopranos. So. All soprano sing. Y'all sound good. Someday, One more time. Someday, if I could do it, everybody could do it. <laughs> day, someday, someday, Alto. Peace and joy, peace and joy and happiness. No more sorrow. Someday, said there'll be peace. Someday, someday, no more sorrow. Tina, your part is. Said I've got to be ready when he calls my name. I've got to be ready when he calls my name. I've got to be ready when he calls my name. Someday, said I've got to be ready when he calls my name. Gotta be ready when he calls my name. I gotta be ready when he calls my name. Someday, oh, oh, said I've gotta be I gotta be ready. I gotta be ready. He's coming real soon. Morning, night, or noon, someday. Said I've gotta be ready when he calls my name. I gotta be ready. I gotta be ready. Someday. Said I'm, I gotta be ready. I gotta be ready. He's coming real soon. Morning, night, and noon, someday. There'll be peace, joy, happiness. No more, no more sorrow someday. Said I've gotta be ready. Oh, I've gotta be ready. Everybody sing the tenor part. Said I've got to be ready when he calls my name. I've got to be ready. I got to be ready. Now we're going to sing the alto part. Said there'll be peace and joy and happiness. No more sorrow. Someday. Said there'll be peace and joy. No more, no more sorrow someday. Said there'll be peace and joy. No more. Everybody sing the soprano part. Say some, someday. to sing it. Someday. Oh, said I've got to be ready when he calls my name. I've got to be ready. I've got to be ready when he calls my name. Someday. I've got to be ready. I've got to be ready. I've got to be ready. Someday. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Oh my God. Oh God. 
Say all of the glory. All the glory belongs to you. All of the glory. All the glory belongs to you. To you, oh God. Oh my God. Oh God. Help me sing it. Say all of the glory. All the glory belongs to you. All of the glory. All the glory belongs to you. To you, oh God. Oh my God. Oh God. And we sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. All of the glory, all the glory belongs to you. All of the glory, all the glory belongs to to you, you oh God, oh my God, oh God, my God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me I know we just did it, but we're gonna do it again. Said my God, my God is awesome. Heals me with. Strength where I'm weak and y'all Forever he will Do it again, say my God He is awesome God is awesome I know that God is One more time, say my God He is awesome God is awesome I know that God is. Oh, somebody said that he's holy. Said he's holy. Said he's holy. He's holy. He's awesome. Oh, somebody said that I need him. Said I need him. I need him. I need him because he's awesome. My God, he is awesome. Amen. Following this next song, we will continue on with the worship. Trouble in my way. In my way. I got to cry sometimes. Oh, trouble. trouble I got to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night, y'all. But that's all right. I know that Jesus will. He'll fix it after a while. Trouble in my way, y'all. Oh, I gotta cry sometimes. There's so much trouble. I gotta cry sometimes. I lay awake at night, y'all. Oh, but that's all right. I know that Jesus will. I know that Jesus will. I know that Jesus will. He'll fix it after a while. Trouble in my home, y'all. Oh, I gotta cry sometimes. There's so much trouble. I gotta cry sometimes. I lay awake at night, y'all. Oh, but that's alright. I know that Jesus will. I know that Jesus will. I know that Jesus will. He'll fix it after a while. Trouble in my way, y'all. Oh, I gotta pray sometimes. Trouble in my way, yeah, yeah. I gotta pray sometimes. I lay awake at night, y'all. I lay awake at night, y'all. I lay awake at night, y'all. Oh, but that's all right. I know Jesus will. I 
know that Jesus we are. He'll fix it after a while. After a while. Good morning, church. This morning we will be reading from the book of Titus. The book of Titus, chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. Book of Titus, chapter 3, verses 1 through 11, from the King James Version. Amen. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of, gener of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that, though, that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an hetero heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself. Now we'll have prayer by Brother Domino. As we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer, could you stand if you are able? Let us bow. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another glorious day. We want to thank you for all the blessings uh, that you give us, the one that we know and that we, one that we don't know. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for guiding our steps. We thank you for protecting us from danger. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to ask a special prayer for those who are still mourning uh, the loss. We pray that you fill that void of loneliness and hurt, and that you, we know that you are the answer to all of the, our problems and to all of our questions. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray as we get ready for the worship service that the Holy Spirit will come and rebuke, instruct, and guide us. We pray for the minister as he comes that he may remember the things that he has studied for us. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray and thank you for the church which is the only way back to you. These prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Let us say amen. Good morning, good morning. Y'all singing like y'all had breakfast. <laughs> you, you said steak and egg? Oh, goodness. In our red uh, sacred selection, let's know it's page 646. 646. And then I want you to put a finger on 398. We're going to go from one right into the other. We're going to keep it all going. If you have it, let us sing. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. Oh, and it bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And now just a little talk with Jesus makes me old. Oh, now let us have well and let us tell. Oh, and he will hear. I'm my G will 
answer him by now when you feel for just as you are. And then you will find a little talk with Jesus that makes it right. I will, and sometimes my past seems real and without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. In the midst of sin may rise and rewrite the starry sky. Well, and now just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. And now let us have a little talk with Jesus and let us tell all about Oh, when he will hear, my, my Lord will answer. And now we Pray for yearn as your heart unto heaven is turned. And you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Ah, well, I may have doubts and fears, and my eyes be filled with tears. And but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. Ah, and I go to him in prayer, and he knows my every care. Now just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Ah, now let us have a little talk with Jesus and let us tell all about Oh, when he will hear my Jesus, he will answer by him. Now when you feel a little prayer for yearning as your heart to heaven it's turning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Well, now there's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond, where the saved on earth shall soon a glory share. In the midst of sins may rise and hide the starry sky. Yeah, just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Ah, it makes it all right. All right, it's all right. 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 And now just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Ah, hell, it's all right. 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 And now just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Let us have a talk with Jesus. Come on, let us tell him about it. Oh, and he will hear our faintest cry. My God, he will answer by Oh, and now we feel. Oh, and as your heart is turned, and you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Amen, amen. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Like I always say, I don't know how your week is going, but we have an opportunity to open our mouths, to sing praises in God. I was doing some studying this week, and the best thank you to God is singing praises to him. We can be singing anything. We can sing Drake. We can sing Kendrick Lamar. I was at the Universal Soul Circus. They was even throwing it back to the 70s and the 60s. But when we come to the house of the Lord, we should have a reason to sing. The song says, if anybody has a reason to sing, we do. If anybody has a reason to praise, we do. And we are thankful that God has allowed us to be here today to do exactly that, to worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm just so thankful for all of our brothers um, that has participated and led us um, in our worship service uh, thus far. Um, we're just so thankful for them. We're th always thankful for our song leaders, and uh, um, they're trying, and we're striving, and we're getting together. Um, and I'm just so thankful for our brothers um, that have been leading us thus far. If you're a first-time visitor, if you're a first-time visitor uh, with us today, again, we just thank you uh, for being with us. You could have been anywhere, um, but you chose to be with us um, today. Um, and even if it's not your first time, um, we just want to thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, before I jump into the sermon, um, just kind of get one to open up with some preliminaries. Uh, uh, yesterday we had a great time at the Universal Soul Circus, amen? Amen, amen. Uh, we uh, had a good time on the, on the yellow bus on the way down. I couldn't tell you the last time I was on the yellow bus. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. I was talking to Zach. Zach said he was looking forward to Pocahontas. 
in the Universal Soul Circus and his feelings was hurt because there was no Pocahontas this year. Uh, but there was a lot of dancing and dance moves and our young people, our young people had a good time. Let's give uh, our young people a round of applause, amen. Amen, but I just definitely want to uh, just thank our leadership, but more uh, specifically to thank the Atwaters um, for making a way for our young people to come with no stressors, no worries, and also want to give a thank you to Brother McBride as well, too. Uh, he's the man with the plan. Um, um, in Milwaukee, we got a lawyer that's David Gruber. We say one call, that's all. Uh, and I believe that's Brother McBride as well. You need one thing, just one call, that's all. And then, man, so we're just thankful for our leaders that um, just sit back um, and no matter what challenge, rather if that's financially, emotionally, um, they put their resources at the table um, to be able to say, let's make sure that our family um, have a great time. Um, also just wanted to pause um, and to recognize and celebrate um, Hispanic Heritage Awareness Month. Amen, amen. And we're just so thankful and grateful for the many uh, contributions um, from those of Hispanic descent. And um, specifically, I think about our brother Cruz, amen, um, and just the great work that he's been doing, not only within this congregation, but around Lake County. Um, and he's excited. Um, I know he's looking at me saying, are you going to announce it? Um, we've been speaking um, about hosting a workshop um, on how we can connect art and therapy together. Art and therapy together. And if you don't know Brother Cruz, he is an outstanding artist, um, not just in writing, but also in teaching. Um, but to be able to teach while also to comfort while being with the family, I'm just excited, so excited. So more details to come on that, definitely stay tuned. Um, also want to give a shout out to Dr. Kimberly George, amen. <laughs> Dr. Kimberly George uh, successfully completed her PhD. Um, I got her title of her dissertation. It's Impact of Parental Involvement of African American Parents in Their Children's Education. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, y'all, that she's a part of the education ministry. Amen. I'm going across the rooms, and I'm seeing that she's already changing rooms up so it can be conducive to learning. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I know our older folk may be a little jealous. Like, we can have bean bags in our Sunday school room. Amen. But our young people are that special. They're that valuable um, that we want to create the best environment for them um, that, that they can learn um, through the word of God. So we're just thankful, thankful to George of you. Um, and then also, let's just pray for our leaders, our ministers looking around, our members, I mean, um, a lot of individuals are traveling across the country. Um, um, got a lot of text messages this morning. Um, a lot of families are sick this morning, so definitely want to pray for like the McClure family as well um, as they are sick. Um, and then the last shout out, Marion Jones. Marion, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Oh, amen, amen. Just thankful, thankful. Let's give him a round of applause, amen. Put his life on the baptism. Last week and was baptized, and we're just thankful um, that you are a part of the body of Christ. All right, let's jump in. Let's jump in. Turn your Bible to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. Uh, this morning, we're going to be focusing on verses 1 through 11. Let me grab my water because Raymond had me singing and everything. I'm like, I got to preach. I got to preach. Titus chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. You got your Bible. You got your Bible apps. Um, definitely open them up. And before we start reading, um, let me give you some background to set the stage. Uh, the book of Titus is a letter written um, by the Apostle Paul, and it's written to a young leader uh, named Titus. Hey, Amen. Somebody say Titus. Hey, Amen. I just had to look at him real quick. <laughs> hey, Amen. Titus was in charge of organizing and leading the church on the island of Crete, right? Uh, and and Titus, and not Titus, uh, Crete was a place um, known for its corruption, uh, for its immorality, um, for its dishonesty. Um, the Cretans had a reputation for uh, being people who lived for themselves, uh, people who were full of selfish ambition and always looking to get ahead, no matter who they heard in the process. So here, as we read from the text this morning, Titus is trying to establish a church um, in a culture that is self-centered, that is deceptive, and that's greedy. Uh, doesn't that sound like the world that we live in today? Uh, people around us are still chasing after their own desires. 
putting themselves first and neglecting the greater good. But Paul knew, Paul knew something. He knew that the church needed guidance on how to live out their faith uh, in such a society. So this morning as we read, uh, Paul pens this letter to Titus to encourage them to live lives that truly reflect Christ, Christ's goodness in a world that desperately needs it. Let's look, let's look at verse, starting at verse 1. And I'm reading from the NLT, NLT version uh, this morning. The Bible says, remind, Paul, what Paul says to Titus, remind the believers to submit to the government and its offices. They should be obedient, always ready to what? Do what is good. They must not slander anyone and must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be gentle and show true humility to everyone. Verse 3 says, once we too were foolish and disobedient, we were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. Our lives were full of envy, evil and envy, and we hated each other. Verse 4 says, but when God, our Savior, revealed his kindness and love, he saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out the Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Because of his grace, he made us right in his sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. And I want you to insist on these teachings so that all who trust in God will devote themselves to what? doing good. These teachings are good and beneficial for who? Everyone. So do not get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees or in quarrels and in fights about obedience to Jewish laws. These things are useless and what? A waste of time. If people are causing divisions among you, Give a first and second warning. After that, somebody say after that. Have nothing more to do with them. For people like that have turned away from the truth. And their own sins condemn them. Now let's be real for a second. We live in a world that constantly tells us to look out for ourselves. We're bombarded by messages that tell us that our value is determined by what we can achieve, what we can accumulate, or how well we can outshine others. The temptation to put self first to chase after recognition, to chase after rewards is strong. And let's be honest, it's easy to fall into that mindset, even as Christians. We often start thinking that if we can just do good enough, if we can just do enough good, maybe we'll earn God's favor or at least make ourselves feel a little more righteous. But as we just read, Paul reminds Titus to teach the church to live lives that truly reflect the goodness of God. See, this wasn't just a nice suggestion, but it was a challenge to live counterculturally. In a world where everyone looks out for themselves, these Christians were called to be different. To do good not because it earned them anything, but because of what God had already done for them. But see, here, here, here's where things get tricky, church. And, and here's where Paul's message to Titus comes in. He makes it very clear. We're not saved by our good works. But we're saved to do good works. All right, let me say that again. We're not saved by what we do. 
but our salvation transforms us and leads us to do good. See, see, this brings us to the focus of our message this morning and, and the title for this morning, Good You Can't Do Alone. Good that you can't do alone. You see, we're not saved by our good works. There's no amount of charity. There's no amount of kindness. There's no amount of obedience to the law that can make us right with God. But the flip side is this, that once we were saved by his grace, we are called to do good works. And here's the key. Here's the key, church. You can't do it alone. You can't do it alone. Matter of fact, you weren't meant to do it alone. See, see, just like the Christians in Crete, they were surrounded. We're surrounded by a culture that's constantly trying to pull us away from living out the values of the gospel. The world wants us to blend in, to chase after selfish ambition, and to act like we don't owe anyone everything, anything. But God's word is calling us to something greater. A life that reflects his mercy, a life that reflects his kindness, a life that reflects the goodness of Jesus. But here's a problem we all face, a condition that we all have to confront. We cannot do good on our own. We cannot do good on our own. No matter how hard we try, no matter how many self-help books we read, or no matter how many good deeds we come up in the week, we fall short. Our sinful nature keeps pulling us back into selfishness. Our sinful nature keeps pulling us back into pride. It's pulling us back into rebellion. But without Christ, we're just like the people Paul described in verse 3. Foolish, disobedient, and trapped by our own desires. See, back in biblical times and even now, we have a desire to prove our worth. To believe that we can earn salvation by being good enough on our own. And yet, the reality is that no matter how hard we try, we cannot escape the brokenness of our sinful nature by our own efforts. On the other hand, once we've been saved by God's mercy, we often find ourselves neglecting the good works that we were saved to do. Distracted by selfish pursuits or caught up in meaningless debates. Come on, it's a tension that we all can relate to, but here's the good news. We are not saved by our works, but we are saved to do good works in God. See, God in his mercy, when he stepped in, he changed everything. He rescued us, not because of the good things we've done, but because of his incredible love, because of his incredible grace. And now as people who have been saved by grace, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to live lives full of goodness, full of kindness, and full of mercy. In other words, if you're trying to be good without the Holy Spirit, if you're trying to be good without God, if you're trying to be good without Jesus, it is impossible. So this morning, we're going to explore what it means. How can we live out the good we were created for and why we can't do it alone? Look, look at verse 1. Look at verse 1. The Bible says, and Paul speaks to Titus. He says, remind the believers to submit to the government and its offices. Preacher, say that again. Remind, remind. See, sometimes uh, a preacher just has to remind. 
We, we, we see. I remember when Brother Atwater gave me the call and said, "Brother Brooks, I think you know you should start considering ministry." The first thing that came to my mind is, "How am I gonna find sermons for 47, 48 years, 52 weeks out of a year, and not preach a sermon where they're like, oh, I already know this." But I started to realize and started to study that God has called ministers, God has called preachers just to remind. See, these Christians in Crete, they just needed a reminder. And he said, remind the Christians to submit to the government and its offices. Remind them that, yeah, they may have a king, but they still got to respect the president. Yeah, they may follow Christ, but they may have to say yes, sir, and no, sir, to the police officer. Christians, black Christians, have to be obedient. And this is not Paul saying because Paul said it, but because God has said it. Ah, come on, come on, come on, come on. Look at, look at, the verse continues to read. They should be what? Obedient. Always, always ready to do what is good. Then the verse continues to read, they must not what? Slander anyone. And he's talking to Christians. He's talking to the church. They must not slander anyone. Uh, not talk. Ah, come on. We, we, we feel so good because we ain't never shot nobody. But we done kill people's name. Keep reading, keep reading, Brooks. Here we go. And they must avoid quarreling. Instead, somebody say instead. They should be gentle. And show true humility to just the church. To just those on the pew. But to whip everyone. See, Paul begins by reminding Christians of their civic duties and their need to reflect Christ in their interactions. See, this, this includes submitting to authorities. Brooks, the only person I got to submit to is my husband. I'll submit to my authorities? But when we submit to authorities, it demonstrates a lifestyle of obedience and humility. See, sometimes the church just needs reminders. See, what Paul is, Paul is not suggesting blind allegiance, but rather an active good life that reflects God's power. See, Paul puts an emphasis on consistent goodness rather than occasional acts of kindness. See, just, just picture your own workplace or picture your own public setting where you've been frustrated with someone in authority. I'll, I'll pause for a little bit. We all have them. Our bosses, our supervisors, the government, we've watched the presidential debate, even the branches of government gets us frustrated. Can I speak to the kids sometimes, our parents? The rules, these standards, gets the kids frustrated. Can I talk about the church? Our elders, deacons. God's calling us to submit to them too. But how easy it is to show grace, how easy it is, to sh is it to show grace when you feel disrespected? Or when you feel misunderstood by someone? It's tough, amen, it's tough. It's difficult, but it's necessary. We cannot display this goodness alone. It 
requires Christ within us to respect authorities. He said, remind them, remind them, remind them to respect authorities. Remind them. See, the good you are called to do in public, whether it's respecting authority or showing kindness to someone who doesn't deserve it, it isn't something that you can muster up on your own. Am I just speaking to myself? See, we were saved to do good works that stand out from others. Why? Only because of the Holy Spirit working in us. We were empowered by Christ to live lives that reflect humility and gentleness. Not just for ourselves, but for a world that is watching and that needs a living example of God's love. Church, you can't do it alone. Even when we have to submit to authority and our call to treat others right. Look at verse 3, look at verse 3, look at verse 3. He says, once we, too, once we, Two, were foolish and disobedient. We, we were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. Our lives were full of evil and envy and we hated each other. See, what Paul is doing right here is contrasting the present state of Christians with their past condition. He, he painted a picture of a life that was dominated by sinful desires, a life that was dominated by foolishness, a life that was dominated by selfishness. Come on. Don't you know that we all had our before Christ seasons? We've all had our BC days where we were driven by things that ultimately destroy relationships. You may ask me, what is BC days before Christ? We've all had days before Christ. And Paul says we too were foolish, disobedient, and slaves to our lust and pleasures. Oh, I'm, I'm, we're going to shout shouting a little bit because there's a good news to the, on the other side of this. In other words, sin enslaved us in our past. And as a result of sin, we were unable to live out the good that God has created us for. That's why everyone in the world says they're good. But they don't know what true goodness is. Until we experience Christ for ourselves then we can look back and say, I truly was never good because my before Christ days had no Holy Spirit in it. See, think about a time where you try to change a habit or you try to change a behavior by sheer willpower. Come on, I'm trying to talk to somebody today. Think, think about when you were trying to overcome an addiction by sheer Willpower. You couldn't do it. Think about when you overcome laziness. That TV show looked too good to get up. Think about when you're trying to change negative behaviors. Lying, envying, and hate. Without Christ, it's in Think about when you're trying to increase positive behavior. You were trying to do good, trying to do good, trying to do good. But it seemed like bad and bad and bad just start coming. How often did you succeed without outside help? How often did you succeed without external intervention? In other words, we needed help to be good. To even know what good truly was, we needed help from the outside. In simpler words, you cannot do the good you are called to do if you are still under the control of old sinful nature. 
Your past, everybody has a past. Your past is full of examples of failure and brokenness because you were trying to operate on your own strength. But when Christ came into the picture, he broke the chains of disobedience and he equipped us to live differently. We don't have to be slaves to our old ways any longer. The goodness that flows from us now comes from him working in us. Church, I'm trying to remind you that you can't do good alone. But in order to do good, you got to remember where you came from. See, I, I don't know, I don't know about you, but when I think about where I used to be, <laughs> how lost and how broken and how blind I was, I can't help but give God glory for rescuing me. <sighs> See, if you only know that it was only by the mercy of God that you're here today, I can just give God praise for myself because he has given us so much. He has brought us through so much, but he has brought us from so much. Aren't you glad that God didn't leave you in your past? That he brought you out so that he can bring you in. Let's look at verse 4. Look at verse 4. Look at verse 4. But, whew, I like that. But when God our Savior revealed his kindness and love, he what? He saved us. Not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of what? His mercy. He washed away our sins. Giving us a new birth and a new life through who? The Holy Spirit. He generously poured out the Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. See, what Paul is trying to do here to teach uh, Titus or to encourage Titus and to empower Titus is to show him the source of good. See, Paul reminds Titus that the Christian's ability to do good does not come from their own effort. It does not come from their own moral excellence. It is entirely rooted in the mercy of God. Let me do some teaching real quick because salvation is an act of grace. And God transforms us through the Holy Spirit. Whom empowers us to live new lives. In other words, our good works are the byproduct of God's grace, not the cause of it. Well, what do you mean? What do you mean a new birth? See, uh, your text may say regeneration, or you may hear the word regeneration. Regeneration means a new birth. In order to be a Christian, you have to be born again. God requires a new birth to experience a new life. Goodness is in the new life. So in order to experience goodness, you need to be reborn. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Uh, that's why when you see rebirth, uh, uh, the Greek um, has it where it's two parts. It's again and to become. So to become again. At salvation, we became or we become something that we were not before. For a person to become a Christian, he needs a second birth. I'm trying to get into how Paul was speaking on it, because spiritual birth, not works righteousness, gives eternal life. Now watch it, it says rebirth, and then he says renew. 
See, renew or regeneration has to do with salvation, but renewing has to do with sanctification. See, renewing comes from two words again, again and new. So renewing is a gradual formation, a gradual build up into the likeness of Christ. What am I saying? What am I saying, Brooks? The transforming power comes through the Holy Spirit. In simpler terms, God transforms by grace. Renewal is an internal change that begins at conversion. So it's why we only need to be reborn once. But we need to be renewed daily. There are individuals in the world without Christ that are trying to be renewed. But they weren't reborn. So he said, look back in your past. Look back at the time you were before Christ. There was no opportunity for you to become something new. And there was no opportunity for the Holy Spirit to work through you. We all had BC moments in our life where we had no Holy Spirit and we looked just like the sin that filled us up. But that's why I'm thankful to God that he gives us in Romans 12, chapter 2. He says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed. How? By the The renewing of the mind, not the rebirthing of the mind. So that means when you're stuck or the old past is talking to you, you ain't got to run to the water, run to the Holy Spirit. Because he will open the door for you to renew you. Only if you've been reborn. Oh, I'm going to get to baptism in a little bit. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. See, matter of fact, Come here, Raymond. You got a nice suit on today. I love that black suit. Yes, sir. What I need you to do, can you hold this? Can you stand, can you stand there? It's an illustration. <laughs> can you pour, open this bottle. I'll hold this for you. And can you pour that, imp, that bottle into this bucket? There's nothing in there. Because the bottle is what? This is how we were without Christ. When God has called us to pour out on our friends and our relatives and everything that we got going on, it's impossible to pour out what you have not been filled with. Can you open up this bottle? And do the same thing. Can you pour it out? When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you can pour and overflow. See, this is just a bucket that may need two or three water bottles. So I may need you, I may need you, I may need you. But have you ever been there? Thank you, Doc. You're a great pourer. Amen. You just pour into us and pour into buckets. Amen. But have you ever been in a place where God has called you to fill into a cup, where only you can fill into because God has given you the experience. He has given you the motivation. He has called you by name to fill a specific cup. Maybe that cup is your spouse. Maybe that cup is your supervisor. Maybe that cup is somebody that's been doing something wrong to you. But God has called you to fill that cup. So in order to fill that cup, you have to be filled up. But have you ever been there when God has called you to fill someone up and you ain't got nothing in you? Let me get back to my notes. But when we are able to fill and to outpour the blessings that God has blessed us with in the first place. If I had time, I, would, I ain't got it, I ain't got it, I ain't got it. I would have asked Raymond, 
after he poured it out, what would he have done to keep pouring? I'm going to let you go home and think about what would you do when your bottle is out, but you know that God is calling you to keep filling. Church, you cannot do good on your own. Because you weren't saved by your own. You were saved by God's mercy. The only reason you can now live a life full of good works is because God, in his grace, has filled you with the Holy Spirit. So just like that water bottle, you can only pour what's inside of you. Christ poured his spirit, the text says, generously into you. And now it's overflowing. His acts of love are overflowing. His acts of kindness are overflowing. His acts of service are overflowing. Where? In you. So it's time to stop working from an empty vessel. Can I, can I speak? It's time for us to stop working from an empty vessel. But it's time to allow God's spirit to do the work in us and through us. Church, we can't do it alone. I'm going to go through this quick. I'm gonna go through. Verses 7 through 8. Because of his grace, he declared us righteous and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. And I want you to insist on these teachings so that who trust in God will devote themselves to doing good. These teachings are good and beneficial for everyone. I know there's saved folk in here. I know there's Christians in here. But I know that there's someone that's not saved in here. And this sermon is for you. See, Paul transitions the outcome of our salvation. He transitions to the outcome of our salvation, which is what? Eternal life. Our righteousness before God and the hope of eternal life should inspire Inspire us to live devoted lives. This is not a suggestion, church, but an expectation for those who are in Christ. In other words, good works are the evidence of a transformed life. Good works are evidence of a transformed life. And they serve as a witness to others. Y'all know I love questions, so let me ask you this. How many of you have ever planted a garden? Let me see your hands. I need, I got, raise them high. Don't be, don't, don't be, mm, raise them high. What happens when you nurture a garden? It grows, right? Just as a well-nurtured plant grows and produces fruit, our lives should naturally produce good work as we stay rooted in Christ Jesus. What's the, what's, what am I saying? What am I saying? The, the good that God has called you to do is not for your benefit alone. But it's for the benefit of others and for the glory of God. So the more you trust in him, the more you are devoted to him, you will become to doing good. Church is not about checking off boxes or making sure that you look righteous to others. But it's about allowing the grace that has served you to flow through your life so that others can see the evidence of Christ in you. Just as much as we know our BC seasons, other folk know it too. And when they start to see the good works, all glory to God that they don't see Brooks, but they see Christ in Brooks. Oh, come on, come on, come on. To the end. More verses. 
Last point, last point, because we, we focus on good, we get saved, but I wasn't going to preach this point, but I think I got to, because many times when we're on the journey of good, we get distracted. And a lot of people come on our journey and on our path, and they try to distract us. So God said, Brooks, preach this. Okay. I'm going to read it slow. Y'all all right? I got ten minutes, five, five minutes, five minutes. All right. Do not get involved. He's speaking to the church. He's speaking to the church. He's speaking to the church. Do not get involved in foolish discussions about what? Spiritual pedigrees or in quarrels and fights about obedience to Jewish laws. These things are useless and a waste of time. Then he gives some instructions. Give them a safe net. If people are causing divisions among you, give a first and second warning. After that, have nothing more to do with them. For people like that turned away from the truth and their own sins condemn them. I know in y'all head, y'all thinking about cutting off, cutting off. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But watch this. Paul, Paul warns against being distracted by unnecessary arguments and divisive people. The Christian life is about living in truth and showing love through good works. The Christian life is not about getting entangled in debates that don't lead to edification. In other words, division and distractions can pull Christians away from their primary focus. Living out their faith through good works that point others to Christ. See, see Paul gives Titus four warnings. He says, one, to avoid foolish disputes. And, and, and Paul always speaks on this. He says, and even in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 3, avoid foolish and ignorant disputes knowing that they generate strife. So if you're looking for problems, you will find problems. Especially in the church. Let me go to the second warning. It says, avoid disputes about genealogies. Well, you know, Brother Brooks, he come from the Reed family. His grandfather was a preacher, then his great-grandfather was a preacher, then his great... So he got to have a word. That ain't got nothing to do with Christ. Ah, uh, come on, come on. Can I talk real? Oh, yeah, you know I've been to Southwestern. I've done this and that. I've went here and here. I've sat underneath this. Do you remember the text where he said, are you a Paul? Or of Apollos. But shouldn't our focus be on Christ? Church, we can get lost in endless genealogies. Now let me say this now. I'm not saying let's not study the genealogy of how Christ came into the scene. That's not what Paul is saying. But what Paul is saying, don't get lost in looking generationally back, 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 back. And looking at man. And you forgot to see Christ. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking. Let me say this. That's why I talk to our young people and I say, don't let slavery turn you away from Christ. Because it's a distraction from stopping you to do what you were created to do. Don't let it distract you, church. He gives a third warning. 
He says contentions, which basically means quarrels that create a sense of strife. See, the, see Paul is speaking directly to people. Y'all know that, right? Christians at that time, they loved to enter religious debates. Ooh, somebody said, don't we do too? I was, I was speaking about the Christians. I wasn't speaking about us. But they loved any opportunity to debate the Bible. They're going to find an opportunity to debate it. And even then, there were individuals that loved strife. I'm going to keep moving. The fourth warning is strivings or battles over the law. See, Paul mentions the law, which indicates that there was conflict dealing with about the law. I'm trying to break it simple. Paul wouldn't mention the law if they wasn't focusing on the law. So Paul knew that the, the, the law, the old law that was for information that wasn't for salvation was becoming a distraction in the church. And if they allowed the, and that's why I say strivings, plural. Not striving one thing, but overly and over continuous strivings. And what's the purpose? What, what, I'm trying to get to the end of this. They all are unprofitable. In other words, they are useless. They're vain, and the pursuit of these things that Paul warned against when we become involved in meaningless disputes about irrelevant doctrine, it bears no fruit. I remember a time, church, when in order to stand up in front of this table, you had to wear a... Because God wouldn't accept your worship if you didn't have a tie. In other words, if you didn't look the part. But somehow in this dispute, oh, I've been in some brothers' meetings about ties, amen. Somehow in this dispute, the outcome was if a brother, a young brother, comes in with no tie, go to the back, to the back, and grab a tie out the back and make sure he put on the tie. Now, come on, we, we, I'm speaking to the new generation right now, right? I'm talking about you coming in looking fly with a sky blue suit with some Jordans. And you forgot to wear a tie. So what would happen was, a brother would go get a yellow tie. Ain't about how you look. It's just the fact that you had a tie on. Can I just speak for myself? So when I had that blue and yellow tie on, the good that I wanted to do was gone. I couldn't look at the word because I was looking at my... So when it was time to lead communion for the church, I wasn't in the spirit to lead worship service that God had called me to do because I'm worrying about a unuseless. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Now let me say this now. I'm not saying come up here and dress how you want to. I'm not saying that God has, doesn't have a standard or a call for us to give him our all. But what I'm saying is when we make doctrines for ourselves, it becomes useless. <sighs> Let me just get to the end. I'm just going to get to the end. Y'all been with me. Oh, it's 12, 20. Let me get it. You cannot do good alone. It doesn't matter how hard you try, how many boxes you check, how many times you convince yourself that you're a good person. <laughs> but this is why baptism is necessary. You cannot do good without being saved. Well, what do you mean, Brooks? I'm a good person. I ain't never did nothing wrong. My record is clean. 
If you ask my mom and dad about me, they'll say, oh, he's a good kid. But I'm here to tell you that you cannot do good without Jesus Christ. There's somebody here today that needs to stop running from an empty vessel. You know how hard it is to live a life by yourself. But God is calling for you today to say yes. God wants to create, he wants to mold you, to build you, to protect you, to help you to become something that you can never imagine. But the more and more we want to imagine it, we have to get into the word. Because God has given us the perfect example. As if we follow him, if we learn to him, if we devote our lives to him, then we truly will understand what good is. So I'm not sure who, what, if this sermon series this month as we're focusing on the fruit of the spirit of goodness, I know it's affected me. But rather than running away from an empty space, from a defeated space, from a sad space, I can look up to God. And if God has called me to pour out, then I know it's time for God to pour in. So if God is calling you to do something great, if God is calling you to show and to spread the light to your family, to your workplace, to spread the gospel, please, please don't move forward with the empty vessel. It's worthless because God is going to call you. Now, I wasn't going to mention it before because I want to make sure nobody's. The verse that we talked about from 9 of 11, and I just ended it for the time. Paul is not just saying cut people off when they do you wrong. I want to make that clear. Right? We as Christians shouldn't be, uh, I like to call it scissors ready. Not trigger ready, but scissors ready. Cut you off. Cut you off. Right? God and Paul gives a procedure to move away from divisiveness because he knows that it'll become a distraction. The same way that Jesus gives a procedure for correction because he knows if he leaves it up to us. So we follow the procedure to ensure, and what's the, what's the outcome? What's the outcome? Restoration. The only reason why we're cutting off is so that they can have time to restore. Not to not do with them. Mm -mm, that's not of God. But there may be individuals, there may be seasons, there may be places where you just have to remove yourself so that you won't get distracted on what God has placed you here for. So if you're here today and you're already a part of the body of God and you're saying, you know what, Brooks, I'm, I've been reborn, but I need to be renewed. Today is your day. We have prayer request cards. That this, you can fill out a prayer request card. You can speak, and we'll pray for you as a body. But if you're here today and you have not accepted Christ as your personal Savior, I'm here to tell you that it is impossible to do good. It is impossible to fulfill the Holy Spirit, but God is calling you to put on Christ in baptism because it is commanded. So as we stand and sing the song of invitation, why won't you come? Why won't you come? I'm glad I know you. Know you. If you have any prayers, we want to pray with you. I'm, I'm glad you know, know me. If you want to put your life on in baptism. Know me. We praise our God. There's so many benefits of being a part of the body of God. He's the best father you can ever have. He wants to care for you. He wants to protect you. He wants to comfort you. He wants to guide you. He wants to take you to another level. We lived but you have to say yes to him. Said we, we can't live this life trying to live it without God because God Jesus knows that he, we need him. So will you say yes? Will you come to him? The water's ready. God is ready. But you just have to say yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 